Okay, so this third oracle session is more about Kundalini, uh, and it's totally my ego that I was uh, curious here. Um, and it's kind of, and it's about the percentages of people having Kundalini process. And uh, anyway, um, why did I ask this question? Because I was reading in um, Kundalini Disciple and the Master book, which was written about. I can't remember. I, I actually, I don't know, maybe 20 years ago, maybe less, less, less time than that. And in there, the master who is Swamiji in the tradition of Kundalini Vidya, Kundalini science, um, uh, Swamiji makes the statement that there is a very small percentage of people on the planet uh, in Kundalini process, a very small number. And I thought, hmm, I wonder if that is still the case nowadays. It, you know, now that we're in this really apparent uh, big shift and we have all these different changes going on. And I also wanted to ask the question because I'm not finding a lot of people um, that are in Kundalini process, lower or upper. I mean, upper is even less than lower, if that makes sense. Um, and I just, I, I just was confused. And why is that at this time? So little people in these processes. Okay. Um, so my first question was, is there still a small percentage of people with a real, uh, Kundalini process going on? Ding, ding, ding. Hot. Yes. <laughs> still, still the case. Um, I asked, so are most people just experiencing what they say? They think they're having a Kundalini awakening, but a, is it really a Kundalini arousal? And I got some, you know, warm, you're close. And then I thought, oh, are most people actually mistaking um, a pranic movement and energy movement for kundalini? Ding, ding, ding. So, um, yeah. So a lot of people who out there who are saying, oh, I'm having kundalini symptoms. And I, and I can feel, I, you just know, it's like when kundalini is active in you, um, you just can sense. And I, and I, and I can sense that these people are not in a kundalini process or that their kundalini hasn't been released. Now, here's, here's something. Kundalini is never asleep. Although we use that term, um, she is always awake. Uh, we wouldn't be alive. We wouldn't be functioning. We wouldn't be breathing. Uh, we wouldn't be self-aware if she wasn't somewhat awake. She is just coiled, okay? But she's never asleep. Um, but she is not released in most people. Most people are experiencing maybe temporary stimulation of Kundalini, but I think what they're experiencing is pranic movement in their subtle body, which can feel, oh, so good. <laughs> okay, and the sage agrees. Um, and then I was asking about uh, tantra and sexual practices to awaken kundalini and i asked many are using incorrect sexual practices no many are using correct sexual practices yes but this is not a true kundalini release ding 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 um so what i understood was that yeah you can do these uh correct occult sexual practices, tantric practices, and you can force kundalini to temporarily rise up and uh, stimulate brain centers. And when that happens, you know, someone can awaken great talents, have charisma, energy healing, temporary visions, and all that sort of stuff. But kundalini will go right back down to her coiled state. These are all temporary situations and not a true kundalini awakening or release. Let's use that word, a true kundalini release and lower beginning of a lower process. I also asked, um, these practices are very damaging to the system, to someone's system. Ding, ding, ding. So if you're engaging in tantric practices or forcing kundalini because you you want all these great experiences and talents uh i highly advise not to do that i don't the sage does and uh swamiji talks about this in all of his books um or joan harrigan that these practices do nothing but damage your energetic subtle body system that are very difficult to repair okay so moving on from that little lecture 
Um, as far as the number of people, the number of people is quite low. Um, let's see, the number of people in lower kundalini process, that means an initial release and all kinds of working on everything from uh, lower Ajna down is between five to 10% of the entire population. Ding, ding, ding. That's what Sage says. Um, those in upper process, Makara and higher, are 1% or less of the total population. Yes, maybe a little bit more, maybe one to 2% of the total population are in upper process. This, these are very small numbers in either process. And I, I would have thought during this time on our planet that we'd have a lot more people in this process, but there is a reason why. Um, let's see here. We have less people in kundalini process, particularly upper process, due to what occurs in these processes is a lot of non-action and isol isolation. There's a lot of self-absorption or absorption because we are trying to take care of our physical self. You know, kundalini process can take you out of action and, and cause you to isolate if it's an uncomfortable process, right? If you come in with a lot of baggage to clear, if you're on the path of enlightenment, but you're not out there changing the world, right? You're, you're doing something else. So during this time, we don't have a lot of people in the non-action isolated uh, arena. However, they are here performing a great service on their own by working on themselves. And I'll tell you why. Um, upper, and I was asking about, you know, kind of what is the service or the role of people in upper and lower process? Are they here to be anchors for the new energy of earth? No, say, say, wrong question. Um, oh, and then it hit me. Oh, those of us in upper process pull up lower process people, pull their kundalini up. So it's like a magnetic field for kundalini. And I got a ding, ding, ding. Yes, the sage liked that question. Um, also, uh, we pull up some non-process people. So I think previously in the Oracle session where I said, those that have, have awakened uh, to this non-dual reality without a kundalini process or some very small kundalini process that hasn't really uh, started off, but the sage said that they would ultimately reach enlightenment this, this um, lifetime. It is because those of us working in the lower and upper process, so say you're in lower process and suddenly Kundalini reaches Makara point, well, then you begin pulling those people without a full release into a full release, and now they're in lower process. So it's a big magnetic Kundalini field. When one rises, so one person that hits Makara you know, I don't know what the numbers are, but can can reach a thousand in lower process and, you know, a hundred in no process. So it, it's um, very interesting. That's at least what came to me. Not saying any of this is true. Um, what else? Um, oh, yes. And those of us in upper and lower process also pull up the people on the edge of a kundalini process. Ding, ding, ding. I already said that. Um, now I was asking about the, all the thousands, maybe millions of people that are kind of waking up to like, we'll just say at the new age spirituality community, there's that, that's the majority of people on the spiritual journey there. They're just kind of entering, waking up into this, oh my gosh, I'm much more than the body. There's a spiritual world out there. I'm going to manifest, I'm going to work on myself and do the gene keys and the human design and, or the law of attraction, you know, just checking out everything. And there's a real sincerity there to better themselves, um, to, to, to make changes, to help the planet, to help others, you know? Um, yeah. What is their role? Let me see here. Um, I asked, you know, is it their role to be like the action takers out there on the planet? And I got to no, know, it's not really the right question. So keep going. Are they here to influence collective consciousness? Um, 
it's a no and a yes at the same time. I need to refine my question. Uh, are they here for channeling, you know, whole, being holders and channeling the new energy? No. Um, do they have a particular role at their level of consciousness? Ding, ding, ding. Okay, so let's see. Um, are they here to plant seeds for a better world? Ooh, you're getting warmer now. <laughs> um, are they holders of a new perception? No, because they, they themselves have not reached a new level of perception. They're, they're still uh, functioning in the mind reality, um, but it's okay. They're here to play the most important role. Um, are they here to help others see a better way? Ding, ding, ding. Through their actions, through their, their, their own bettering themselves, um, that's how they influence. They're not here to be prothal. You know what I'm trying to say? Tell others this is what you need to do. They are here to show others a better way. And the role, you know, I was asking, so what would be their role title? Are they ushers? Warm. Guides? Warm. They're exemplars of a better way. Yes, you, you've asked enough questions and we're going to end right there. So all of you beautiful people just now awakening, becoming, in, you know, working on yourself. It's beautiful. You guys are the ones that are planting the seeds and you are the exemplars of how to be and how to, and you are here to plant seeds and influence through your own behavior, not through talking about it or trying to change someone's mind, but through your own example, how we can live better, have better communities, better monetary system, political, so everything better. You have your work cut out for you. Uh, while the rest of us, lower and upper Kundalini process people, we are holders, advancers. I don't know what the right word is for Kundalini process to awaken in those not yet awakened or who need a little push. So you and I are doing a great service as well, just not as active. It's all internal and Kundalini is guiding us. Okay. I hope you enjoyed those Oracle sessions until next time.